from the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles, California, it's the 51st Annual Academy Awards. Now we're in the plaza of the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion of the Music Center in Los Angeles, California, where crowds have been gathering since early morning to witness the arrival of the most glamorous names in the movie industry. And as we look across here is Kim Novak, with the producer of tonight's Academy Awards show, Jack Haley Jr. This is Bruce Dern. This is his first nomination for Coming Home, for Supporting Actor. Here is Yule Brenner, and with Yule Brenner is Mia Farrow. Marsha Mason, the nominee for last year for Best Actress, and Neil Simon, nominee for Screenplay. Here comes Telly Savalas, an Oscar nominee. And Steve Martin and Bernadette Peters just crossing the patio. Gary Busey, nominee for the Buddy Holly story. Robin Williams, Mort, the Mort who's about to star in the new movie called Popeye and Diane Cannon, nominee for supporting actress in Heaven Can Wait. Here is Christopher Reeve, Superman, the latest movie idol. And Margot Kidder, Lois Lane in Superman. One of the presenters tonight is James Coburn. Ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful Raquel Welch, also a presenter tonight. And the nominee for the best actor for coming home, John Hoyt. Robin Wagner, Robert Wagner, and Natalie Wood. Maureen Stapleton, nominee for best supporting actress in interior. Earl Steve, a first-time nominee for Supporting Actress. And Audrey Hepburn, former winner and presenter tonight of a special award. And here is Lord Lawrence Olivier, nominee also to be presented a special honorary award from the Academy tonight. And this is Jane Fonda, actress nominee for Coming Home. The 51st Annual Academy Award for the galaxy of stars. It's the, with a gallery of stars, Lauren Bacall, Robbie Benson, Ray Bolger, Debbie Boone, Yul Brynner, George Burns, Diane Cannon, James Coburn, Francis Coppola, Sammy Davis Jr., Dom DeLuise, Richard Dreyfuss, Mia Farrow, Gary Grant, Jack Haley, Audrey Hepburn, Julie Jones, Ruby Keeler, Chris Christopherson, Steve Lawrence, Carol Lindley, Ali McGraw, Julie McLean, Larry Manilow, Dean Martin, Steve Martin, Johnny Mathis, Olivia Newton John, Kim Novak. Jane Oliver, Gregory Peck, Valerie Perrine, Christopher Reed, Ginger Rogers, Diana Ross, Kelly Savalas, Brooke Shields, Ricky Schroeder, Maggie Smith, Maureen Stapleton, Donna Summer, Danny Thomas, Jeff Valenti, John Boyd, John Wayne. Raquel Welch, Paul Williams, Robin Williams, David L. Wolper, Natalie Wood, and Oscars Master of Ceremonies, Johnny Carson. The Overture, featuring music from the five nominated original scores, will be performed by a 100-piece ensemble known as the Orchestra. Alan Ferguson conducting.
Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Howard W. Koch. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 51st Academy Awards. Tonight, Oscar has his second 50 years starting. And to help us celebrate this event, there are over 50 stars who range in age from 8 to 83. They represent Hollywood's past, its present, and most importantly, its future. And as in the past, we again join together to honor achievement and excellence in the film industry. And that excellence carries through our choice of member of the, I'm sorry, the Master of Ceremonies tonight. A critic recently described him as a national treasure, and we share that opinion. The Academy is proud to welcome Mr. Johnny Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, Howard, thank you for the very flattering remarks. Before we begin tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say for the record that I am in favor of using more American Indians and other minorities in motion pictures. <laughs> I am against polluting the oceans of the world. I am for every nationality having its own homeland. I'm against whacking baby seals on the head, and I'm for saving the whales. <laughs> and now... Thank you, I've never received a squatting ovation before. I, as you well know by now, this is the 51st Annual Academy Awards. Two hours of sparkling entertainment spread out over a four-hour show. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, I think the Academy can be very proud tonight that this program is being beamed via satellite right at this moment to 54 countries throughout the world and 350 million people. This program is also being broadcast to South America. In, the, uh, in that way, the former executives and accountants at the studios will be able to catch part of the show. Uh, just as an interesting sidelight, it's also being seen in the oil producing or the OPEC nations this year, but this year, ABC has added on a 9% increase for the television rights in those countries. We figured fair was fair. I, you know, I was just thinking, I wonder if Jerry Brown and Linda Ronstadt are watching from the Kenya Holiday Inn. No, I, I, I doubt it. It's a dollar extra for TV in the room. Now, a lot of people who come to these affairs try to act blasé, and I'll have to be very honest with you, I am very thrilled to stand up here tonight and gaze out on this glorious throng of beautiful people. I see a lot of new faces, especially on the old faces. But I think all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is take a casual glance around this audience tonight and you realize that the elite of the film world has turned out for this memorable occasion. I have not seen so many major motion picture stars gathered together in one place since the last audition for a television commercial. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's why Marlon Brando is not here tonight. Marlon's on a Navajo reservation filming a Mazzola commercial. <laughs> Marlon calls it maze. Uh, now, I think everybody has pretty much agreed that the quality of pictures nominated this year in the category the best is outstanding. And I don't want to take any favorites, but to me, Heaven Can Wait was an unusual picture for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it was a real fantasy about Warren Beatty not being able to find a body he could use. Uh, and the other reason was the plot. The plot was intriguing. Heaven Can Wait showed it might be possible for someone to die and come back to life. A notion which scares the hell out of Christina Crawford. <laughs> and I think the variety of music up this year is, uh, is wonderful. 
You might be thrilled to know, I just heard this afternoon, that one of the nominated songs this year, Ready to Take a Chance Again, has just been selected as the theme song by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. <laughs> now, perhaps the biggest change in motion pictures, at least since I've been a kid, has been their maturity. Movies have really grown up since the early days of censorship. Motion pictures today tackle controversial themes. They're not afraid to portray nudity. And very often they show explicit sex. About the only thing left of the imagination is how much money the studio really made on the picture. <laughs> that joke in Bulgaria, I think, will do a little better than it did here. <laughs> no, the, you know, the plots have changed, you see. Well, I suppose today's pictures are much more liberal than when I was a kid, because I remember going to the movies, and every time they showed two people about to become intimate on the movie screen, they would cut away to giant waves pounding the shore. And for years, I thought foreplay led to drowning. <laughs> yeah. of my life. Now, I... You see, in those days, we always knew how the romantic pictures were gonna turn out. But today's Hollywood formula is boy meets girl, boy loses girl, girl sues boy for half of everything. <laughs> um, Mr. Chu, come out here, please. Now, I realize that means absolutely nothing to you, but right now, Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping in China is hysterical. <laughs> I thought I should do a one-person-to-person -person joke for the new diplomatic recognition. Those of you here tonight who have toiled in Hollywood for a number of years realize that an actor's life today is probably a little better. In the old days, the major studios were in charge. They had all the stars under contract, told you what picture to make, what studio to make it for, and how much you'd be paid. In those days, the big studios were all powerful. As a matter of fact, Jack Butel and Jane Russell still owe RKO five pictures. Universal has just announced its newest disaster film coming out called Airport 1980. And I want to tell you, this is a harrowing epic in which passengers aboard a 747 are held hostage for two weeks while a madman keeps rerunning the in-flight movie moment by moment. <laughs> you... Do you realize while we're all here having a good time, Woody Allen is sitting home watching his sneakers go through the spin cycle? <laughs> it's been a big year for directors named Allen. Irwin Allen gave us a movie about bees and Woody Allen gave us a movie about wasps. <laughs> now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, there has been some criticism of the Academy and especially of this telecast that it is rather a frivolous, cheap commercial exploitation. That is not true. And I will discuss this in greater detail following the swimsuit competition between Laurence Olivier and John Voight. <laughs> I want to thank the Academy for inviting me to be your host this evening. I hope you're all relaxed now, so let's settle back and all enjoy the program together. Thank you very much.